What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Winter Circle Sports Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are starting a new era on the podcast where we are going to be focusing on New York baseball. Dude, best baseball you can watch at this point in time right now. Nardi, I couldn't agree more. Each series, we are going to be doing a recap of how our teams did the past few days. Without further ado, let's begin. Nardi, why don't you tell us how the Yankees started this week? All right, so coming off the White Sox series, we had not too shabby. I mean, we won the series. We won our last couple. Um, Yankees-Orioles. I'm going to start by saying that the Orioles are not the team they were last year. Um, They're not going to get pushed around. They're not going to give out free wins like they did for the last couple of years. Like every game they've played this year has been close. As I say that, I mean, the Yankees won by four runs in this game. Um, But it was tied. Actually, the Orioles, I think, were winning until like the fifth inning. And then, you know, they Severino started this game. So he, just, he did great. I think it was like he gave up two runs, but like not in the same inning. It was like the first and like the fifth. Um, Judd, they, Aaron Boone gave Judge a day off, which I, in my opinion, that's the worst mistake you can make for Aaron Judge. Like, yeah, he's hot, but like you'll hear why next game. Um, let's see. We got Donaldson and Rizzo. They, they you know, you give Judge a day off. Someone has to step up. You got to take a spot. Donaldson and Rizzo went back to back in the fifth inning put on five runs that inning, take the lead. Great. Um, and Jose Trevino too. He's another one. Our catchers, are they getting hot? I don't know. I couldn't tell you because Higgy is, you know, both catchers are bad in like 160 right now. It's terrible. You know, Ben Rockford just got another surgery. So, I mean, we're still down a left-handed catcher, but like, what are you going to do? Moving on to the Mets, we started off the week getting rain delayed on Monday. So we're going to play a doubleheader on Tuesday. Game one, the bats were a little bit alive. We had Dom Smith, my personal favorite player on the team, and McNeil going two for four each with the RBI. Final was 3-1. I mean, it's one of those games that, like, we had the bullpen pitcher going, Trevor Williams. So it's just nice to win, and it sets you up to take both games as a doubleheader, which is always good. You never want to lose the first game. Game two, we uh, I felt like we just kind of threw away. We had a lot of opportunities. Bottom of the six, uh, we got out, two outs, bases loaded. Eighth and ninth inning, we both had first and second. The game ending on a Lindor strikeout, which a lot of people uh, were not too happy about after the game. But I felt like we had some opportunity to win that game and take both. But we ended up splitting. So one and one going into game three tomorrow. All right. Game two, Yankees win five to four. Solid game again, but like I said earlier, Orioles are not going to go out. Just they're not going to go out like they did last year. They're not a free win team. Everybody's playing them hard. They're playing everybody tough. Their pitchers have been lights out this year. Hitting is where they struggle a little bit, but their pitchers have been so far so good. Um, You know, game two, don't bet, don't sit, Judge. I think if you look back in his last three games that he's been benched the day before, he has at least one home run. And he should have had three. He went three. He went, yeah, he went four for five, two home runs and a double. And the double he hit was a home run in 29 of 30 ballparks. So he should have had three home runs. But Camden Yards, they pushed the left field back and raised it up. Like, I don't know how, but I think it was 35 feet or something. But they pushed it back. Kind of screwed Judge of a home run. But, I mean, Yanks won 6-5. Is he our whole offense in that game? Pretty much, yeah. Like, it was two solo home runs. His double drove in a run. I don't think he's. I don't think he scored a run other than the home runs. And, you know, we go into the top of the ninth. We strike. We go down one, two, three. Okay. We go to the bottom of the ninth. We're up two runs, and out walks the Cuban Missile Crisis. That's what I've heard people calling him, which I think is hysterical. By the way, comes in, absolutely shits the bed. Don't know how he pulls it off. He does, manages, only gives up one run, even though I'm pretty sure he walked the bases loaded. Only gave up one run. Yankees win 6-5. So it's, I mean, you win. a win's a win, but Chapman just makes me very nervous when he comes in. Very, very nervous. And before we go to the next game, I know Aaron Judge said he's not talking contract until after the season. But if the Yankees don't give him what he wants, I'm going to be a very unhappy man. I think most Yankee fans are going to agree with me on this because, I mean, like he showed you – he's showing you what he's worth. Not only is he – like, yeah, he leads the league in home runs, 
but he's also batting 305, 308. And but he's using the whole field. Like if you watch him in the last couple of years, you know, he used to he's a big pole hitter. Now he's hitting Oppo, he's hitting Oppo home runs. It's a whole different ball game now. So the third game for the Mets turned into a pretty scary ending. Uh, overall, we did win the game. It was 11 to four, but it was not without Max Scherzer taking himself out of the game to really just make Mets fans totally forget that we just really played well that game. I mean, it's a really scary thing finding out now that he's going to be out six to eight weeks. It's uh, it's a huge loss to the team. I mean, he's our best player. He's our best pitcher. With Jake already out, I mean, we were relying on this guy. I think he just went for a six W, striking out people left and right, and uh, now we're going to lose him. So that's definitely the biggest story of game three. Totally put aside, Alonzo had a really great day, two for four, a two-run home run in the eighth, four RBIs. I mean, McNeil had another day, two hits, two RBIs. Just a good game, but had to be ruined with an injury. Here we go. Yanks go into game three, 2-0 in the series, right? Starting off hot. Garrett Cole came out, pitched another seven innings. I think, me personally, now he, like, his stats speak for themselves now. Everybody's talking about the sticky stuff and all this issue. Like, I agree, yeah, he was better when he was going like this every two seconds. But, like, I, like, I mean, the guy's still a good pitcher. He, he's now 4-0 as a starter, has a 2.92 ERA. Um. I think he's back to our ace level. Like, I know if people were – like, it's not really a joke. Like, Nestor is right now the best pitcher on the Yankees. But, like, Garrett Cole, you know, he's getting – what was his contract? 300-something million or, I don't know, some stupid amount of money. But, you know, guy's getting paid almost 10 k a pitch and just wasn't, you know, lights out. Coming into this, this is a crazy stat, in my opinion. Clay Holmes, I'm referring to him as the go-to guy. It used to be Chapman. Then we had Britain for there in that spot for a while. We're in a close game. We need somebody to come in. I think it's got to be Clay Holmes. You know, everyone was making a big deal when he came from Pittsburgh last year and had like a, I think it was, a, I don't know if it was a 7.4 or a 4.7. I don't know which order the numbers were in, but for an ERA, everybody was freaking out. He, I don't think like he played for the, like he played for the Pirates. Like, like enough said. Like, there, there's nothing else you can put there. Like, now he's coming in, right? This is the stat I was talking about. He hasn't allowed a run in his last 19.2 innings coming out of the relief, which, in like, for a guy who is, you know, 4.70 RA, oh no, he's coming in. He's been lights out since joining the team last year. He came in, pitched three innings in that Claire Cole game, which for a reliever is, you know, but when you're going good, Boone's not going to take him out. So, but all I have to say is thank God for the bullpen because there's some times where the game is close and we put people in like today, like game four, game four starts out. I, I have it listed on every one of my notes. You can go and look, the Orioles will not go out easy. They are a team that like, yeah, their record is they're like 14 and however many losses, but, so are the Red Sox. Like, it, it doesn't mean anything. The Red Sox have the same amount of wins as them. Jordan Montgomery pitched today. I feel very bad for this man. Not because he's a bad pitcher. Simply because he is in – of the qualified, it was like 55 American League pitchers. He is in bottom 40 for run support, him and Nestor Cortez. That's why they have, like, no wins on their thing. Like, their record, they have no wins. I mean, what are you going to do? But this was what shocked me the most today, surprisingly. Um, I'm going to share my screen real quick, and you can help me out here. And, uh, Sean, I want you to decide, okay? So, Anthony Rizzo, as you can see here, you know, shout out Talking Yanks, John Moy for posting this, got tossed today, right? Look at the pitches. Below the kit below the strike zone, right? Below the strike zone again. That one that's questionable, right? I get it's bad. I have to see the first one again, but yeah, I'll I'll bring it back. I'll bring it back. Don't worry. We have all the time in the world here. That yeah, one that first one. That one's questionable, right? This one I can see. Catcher made a good frame. Go to the, the first ball. one. Go to the first one. <laughs> I got it first. Like, look, it went it, the, first like, one, the first one dropped a lot more than the second. It hit the like, if you look, it hit the catcher in the foot. 
like yeah it broke the plate pretty high but the ball ended up finished in all the right game, all right, right? Ball, ball, that, ball. that one i get that one's a strike i'm giving that one a strike regardless who you whoever you are i don't care if you know i don't care if you're tony Gwynn, strike right and then they call the same pitch and then how, how much taller is stan than rizzo i think stanton's six six and rizzo's like six two six three I think that's so like it, I, it's the height difference, but like Rizzo got tossed, it, you know, you know, it's that thing. Okay. Like it, it's just, it happens. Like there's nothing you can do about it. Um, you know, Stan now I'm pretty sure this MLB said this leads the league in RBIs, which is crazy to me. I don't like, I don't, like I said, I don't know. I heard that. I don't know how true it is. If it is true, good for him. Like today he went two for three with one home run and three RBIs. All right, he did good. And then this is what I was talking about earlier. Chad Green threw a pitch and just, like, pointed to his forearm, said, I'm done. That was it. He's done. That's all he said. Good on the Orioles today. I mean, Anthony Santander, he always he always makes us look silly when we play him every time. Three for four, two doubles, and a walk-off three-run home run. Like, guy, there's nothing much you can do. You know, the Yankees are still up five games in the division, so – you know, we're still up five games. Next closest team is the Rays. I'm not really worried. Um, you had a crazy day with the Mets, though. Yeah, the Mets definitely had a another huge game, but it just felt a lot nicer to, to watch the win. So let's get into it. <sighs> All right. So, yeah, we definitely had a bit of a crazy fourth game of the series. We started – by getting in a little trouble in the ninth inning with our closer, Edwin Diaz, and I don't have a funny nickname. He got us into a little trouble, and we ended up giving up a run on an error by a third baseman. I mean, it's just a tough situation to be in, but we still had a chance to win the game. We're going to the bottom of the ninth with the top of our lineup. We got into a two-out situation where Lindor was up again. So in that situation with Lindor up, and I think there was two men on, I was trying to predict the walk-off. And even Gary Cohen said in the cast, like, if you're going to think home run, you're going to think it in this situation. Bottom of the ninth, it should be the best player on your team. Two outs, two outs, are you more? He didn't end up getting it, you know, so we went to the 10th. We got out of the 10th with just a run off us. Pete Alonso is the first man up in the bottom of the 10th, and he hit a bomb. Bomb, bro. I mean, you were watching it at the time. That yeah, was a no doubter right off the bat. I mean, what were nah, you? He doing? knew. He knew. Yeah. I think everybody knew. I don't think I've ever heard Keith Hernandez get shocked like that. That <laughs> ball left the stadium in like two seconds. <laughs> so we'll definitely show you that clip right now in case you missed it. And Alonzo cracks oh. one of the best. Giovanni Gallegos and Alonzo loses it. Jump shot and a jump on home plate. Seven, six, and ten. So thank you so much if you watched to this part of the video. We're going to be back every series with this and doing other videos as well along the way. Nardi, it was a pleasure, man. Yeah, man. Great, great, great. Welcome back, everybody.